In this video, I want to show you how to import OpenAI's APIs so that you can use them in your Flutterflow app. Now, often you would manually add these in, so you would get the URLs and any parameters you need and bring them in, but there's an easier way because Flutterflow supports the importing of open API files, also known as Swagger files, so that you can import them all at once. Now, these will either be JSON or YAML files, and OpenAI has provided it. So jump over to this URL and and then we'll download it. So here's the file and you can just come over to this download raw file and it'll download it to your computer. Then we can jump back into Flutterflow and upload that file. And just like that, you've got all of their APIs in the Flutterflow's API manager. Now, the one last thing that you wanna do is you wanna set your API key for whichever calls you're using. So let me show you where to get that in OpenAI and then we'll put it into Flutterflow. So I'm signed in here to my OpenAI account. That's this URL. And you wanna come over to this keys section. Then just create a new secret key, call it whatever you want and create the secret key. You're only gonna be able to see this once, so make sure you keep it in a secure place. If you do lose track of it, you just wanna come back here, delete that key and then create another one. So copy it here and then we can go back to Flutterflow. Now there's two main ways to use your API key. The first one is just to paste it into anywhere where you need it. So I paste it in here. And remember not to ever expose this key as others can use your account. And the way to keep this most secure is to come over to advanced settings and use this make private. This means that this call will be routed through a cloud function. So this key will not be in the generated code for your app. But when you're just building and testing your app, it's fine to keep this off. Okay, so this is the first way to use it. Now, if you're just using one call, then putting it here is fine. But if you're using multiple calls, we can store this key as a variable at the top level in our group. So let's save this and then go into our group settings and define a group variable right here. So let's add a variable, call it API key. It's going to be a string and you can just put in your key there. Now, all we have to do is reference that and we do that through square brackets. So I'm going to copy this, but I'm gonna go back into that call and then replace that right here. So square brackets and API key. Beautiful, let's save that. And that's it, you're ready to use these in your app. But let's not stop here. Let's actually do some cool things here to show you how it gets wired up. So which model do we wanna use? Well, let's try out this new vision model. It's GPT-4 with vision. So this is just GPT-4 with the ability to upload and understand images. Okay, so how do we use this? Well, down here we've got a quick start guide and if you're not seeing what I'm seeing, it's probably because it's on Python right here. So let's just come into the curl right here and let's just grab the body of this request right here. So I'm gonna scroll over and just grab all of this down here and copy that and come into the body right here and I'm just gonna replace what's here. Now by default, this import will bring in every parameter in the body that you're gonna need, but you probably won't need everything. So it's good to find an example to start from. And those are pretty easy to find. And OpenAI has a great cookbook as well as examples in their documentation. So let's just select all and paste. Let's get rid of this last mark down here. And that's a good starting place. All right, so what do we wanna do here? Maybe we wanna upload a picture of tree bark and figure out what kind of tree it is. Let's do that. So we need to figure out what dynamic data do we need here? Like what's gonna change every time we call it? Well, the URL of the image will change and the question we ask from it is gonna change. So if those are dynamic, then we need to make those variables. So let's come into variables here and let's add one here. We actually don't need this API key because we implemented it at the top level of the group. So we can just delete that and we're gonna do query. It's gonna be a string. And the second one is going to be the image URL. So let's just make an image path. And now those are gonna show up in our body right here, our query, our image, and this API key is coming from our top level body. That's why that's there. So now we can just pull these into our request body. So here's our text. So we're just gonna delete this right here and replace it with the query and replace this URL and replace it with our dynamic URL. Beautiful. So let's save that and test it out so we can set up our 
JSON paths. So come into response and test. Our query for testing is going to be what kind of tree is this? And then we need an image URL. So let's just go on to Unsplash. This looks good, so let's grab the address and post it in here and test our call. Beautiful, so here's our response and in this choices array is our answer. The tree in the image you provided has a distinctive pattern bark, which is commonly found on pine trees from the genus Pinus. How cool is that? Okay, so we're almost done. We've got this response, but we need only certain parts of it out of it. So let's go down to JSON path and define those. We want this text right here. So let's come over to recommended here and we can see that Flutterflow gives us this path right here that returns that text. So we are going to select it and then come over, select it and give it a name. We're gonna call it response text and save it. All right, and last thing, let's just wire it up in our UI. We're gonna have a bunch more tutorials that take step-by-step -step walkthroughs of building this. So I wanna show you the main features of how to connect your API. So very quickly, the design is I've just got a column and an image right here. We're not seeing anything right here because this is bound to the widget state of the URL that the user will put in right here. And we'll see that when we're testing it. Then I've got the response text from OpenAI. And I'll show you how that's bound after I show you the actual call. And two text fields that'll take the image URL and whatever question I wanna ask about that image. And then the button to make the actual API call. So let me show you how that's set up. So here I open my actions and I have an API call set up and I've set it to my group and that chat completions endpoint that we were just working on. We had two dynamic pieces of data, our image and query. So we've got those connected to the widget states right here, that first one and the second one for our query. And let's just give our response a more semantic name that makes sense. Open AI response. And then we're just updating the page state. And this is just to handle the hiding and showing of that response text. So now we can come into the response text and see that this is bound to that open AI response. Okay, sweet, let's test it out. All right, so maybe this time I wanna ask it about the calories in the picture of a meal. So this would be good for that. So let's just get that URL. So let's just paste that in and say approximately how many calories in this meal. Beautiful, roughly this many calories. Or what about this example? Maybe I wanna know what architectural pattern a house is in, like this one. Well, let's try it out. What architectural pattern is this? Ah, Cape Cod, beautiful. And that's how to import and use OpenAI's APIs in your Flutterflow app. We'd love to know what APIs you wanna integrate into your app, so leave them below so we know what to make tutorials on next.